Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. I'm so glad you could join us today, uh, wherever you are in your busy, busy world, and, and uh, take some time out and let's worship God for the next few moments. Uh, as we begin today, I have the usual announcements. You can find us on Facebook and YouTube under Vicar John, and you can find us on uh, my website, uh, vicarjohn.com. Go there. We will. You can pause at any time, and I encourage you to do so and, and go and play some music somewhere during the service. Uh, you can find lots of wonderful hymns and praise tunes on uh, on YouTube, and, and I'm thinking of some suggestions for today. Uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Now we thank we all are God, and we gather together. Uh, just some suggestions, and there are many, many, many more. Also, we're going to have prayer time here in just a moment, and uh, that's the time I will ask you to pause once again and go in time of personal prayer. Take as long as you need, as long as you want. Uh, this is your conversation with God uh, as I will lead you into it because uh, it's so very important. <laughs> and uh, um, we're kind of talk, we're talking about that a little bit again today, prayer. Uh, as we, uh, the title of today's uh, sermon is God Always Keeps His Promises. Uh, so we're going to look at that. And uh, uh, I started something I had, Ten Stranger Sayings, and we're down to number seven here. Isn't it strange how everyone wants front row uh, tickets to concerts or games, but what they do whatever is possible to sit in the last row in church. Uh, anyway, just think about that. Uh, so, uh, without anything uh, further ado here, I think we'll just uh, begin our, our worship with, uh, with uh, uh, ringing in the hour of worship. Let us open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the love you give us, that love that's always there, Lord. And we ask today that you put the Holy Spirit upon us and cast out any bad spirits that might be around us or near us. Cast them away, Lord, as we come to worship you and only you. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our uh, Proverbs for today comes from Proverbs 14.21. He who despises his neighbor sins, but blessed is he who is kind to the needy. We're always to be helping out the needy whenever we can. Uh, our call to worship today comes from Psalm 29. Uh, the voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bears, and in his temple all cry, Glory! The Lord is enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people, and the Lord blesses his people with peace. Oh, praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. Now we come to a time of, of prayer time. And as I said, I'll ask you just to stop. I push the pause button in a moment and go into silent prayer. Um, so let us, let us go into prayer now. Oh, Heavenly Father and God of all, we praise you for the, your abundant love that you give us. And we ask for the wisdom we need to learn from our past and our present mistakes. Uh, we ask also for your guidance in our futures as we pray this in the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you once again, Lord, for, for bringing us together here, Lord. And there's so many bad things happening right now lord with the, there's riots for this and riots for that and 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 i really don't understand any of it lord because uh, we're all your children and, and so many people are lost and, and that's part of the problem lord we have failed lord as a church and we just need your help to get people to come back to you lord uh th their unrest 
it doesn't need to be unrest. It can be easy rest if we rest in you. Just help us to do this. Help us to make that transition. Lord, we ask that you be with the hurting and poor throughout the world, Lord, and be with them and help them. We ask that you be with our leaders, Lord, and, and wherever they may be, and our troops wherever they may be. Uh, Lord, just be with them and help them, Lord. We ask that you be with our communities, Lord, as we gather and, and the summer starts now and, and, and uh, just be with us uh, during this wonderful summer season lord we just thank you uh, that you're always there and, and and we can call on you lord for help we can call on you for comfort we can call on you when things are going great we just thank you and praise you lord as we pray the prayer that jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the uh, book of Luke, uh, first chapter, uh, verses uh, 39 through uh 56, I believe, yes. Uh, and, and this is a familiar passage. Uh, At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped with joy. Blessed is she who has believed in what the Lord has said to her will be will be accomplished. Mary's song. This is Mary's song. Then Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. My mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arms. Arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. The words of God for the people of God and all God's people said, praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you once again and we ask that the words of my mouth be your words and they fall upon open ears and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some of you may realize by now that uh, I really stress having a prayer life, and I'll talk about it quite a bit, and we'll talk about it again today. I don't think there's anything more important that we can do than pray. Uh, probably the main reason for this is, is that Jesus commands us to pray. And if Jesus commands us, then I think that's good enough for me. And if he commands us, then he has some good reasons as to why we should pray. And pray all the time. Uh, that's what that's where we're going today. Now, some of you may think this passage is a Christmas passage, and and you wouldn't be wrong there. However, many of the passages we consider to be seasonal really apply all the time. The Bible really packs a lot of material in, in as few words as necessary. Maybe pastors like myself should heed this also. Also, so, uh, so, so therefore, let's take a look at why we should be praying all the time. Uh, do you remember the Dr. Seuss tale, How the Grinch Stole Christmas? Remember how the Grinch just couldn't understand why everyone sang and feasted and celebrated but with the giving of presents? They were happy even after the Grinch stole the presents. They just kept on singing and celebrating. So why is everyone so happy at Christmas? Also, have you ever found yourself like the Grinch? I've gone to church on Christmas Eve with a heavy heart, but people, the people soon shake me out of it with their singing and, and holiday cheerfulness. 
uh, everyone is happy and smiling and a, few, and, and a few minutes before this I was felt like weeping. It just didn't seem fair. If we read the whole story of Mary, we might find the same thing. Here we have a very young girl whose world had come crashing down on her. She is a poor woman or a uh, young girl with no social standing. She has no rights. Women only belong to men. She is considered to be little better than property. She also finds herself pregnant and not married. That could have given her the death penalty in those days. Her betrothed has threatened to call off the marriage and leave her high and dry. She is in a terrible jam. But, uh, no, I mean not but, she had no place to go and no one to turn to. Or did she? Or did she? Now Mary was a woman of God. Uh, she'd been talking to an angel of the Lord. As a matter of fact, the angel had laid out all that would happen, and it's all happened. Now we get to today's scripture, which is more than a song. It's, it's a prayer. Anytime we talk uh, to or about God, we are in a form of prayer. It, it isn't uh, hard to do, as you will see. I think the first thing that Mary tells us is that God makes you happy. Uh, right away she sings my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior as I've just said all that could really go wrong for Mary had happened uh, she really has no earthly reason to feel any kind of joy but she starts out by saying she glorifies and rejoices one of the sad things about our scriptures uh, today, and I've mentioned this before, I, I believe, is that we have really watered down the meaning of many of the words. Uh, and here we have it again. Too often we read over these words and, and they have no real meaning. First of all, we glorify. Our text, uh, our con in, our, in our context here, this means to exalt, worship, laud and praise when mary or us for that matter glorify god it means to hold him up to the highest esteem possible too often we just kind of think nonchalantly glorify god we think that you know we can kind of skip over this it's it's not a big deal we are so very wrong here and mary points this out we are to get excited and shout it out for the Lord. This is because the next word she uses is rejoice. Uh, just as a little sidebar here, I once knew a man uh, who told me that his wife would kill him if he ever rejoiced, and I was puzzled until I remembered that her name was Joyce. Hopefully, that will loosen us up a little bit so that we can rejoice. When we rejoice, we are to exuberate. We are to have gladness. We are to be filled with triumph. In other words, we are to get excited by the Lord. After all, he is the great creator of all you see and all you have. His power is beyond belief, and so is his love for you. You cannot outlove Jesus, and that's something to rejoice also. This is how we should be praying all the time, and every time we go into prayer. And this is just a start. God makes us so happy because he has a very special part for you to play. Mary tells us that she is very humble, and, but she knows what she will be doing. When she gives birth to Jesus, she will be remembered forever. Not only will she be remembered forever, but Jesus will remember those who hold up his name. I think uh, that... We sometimes get caught up in the words uh, that they use uh, when they say fear, fear the Lord uh, as, as they use it there. And it might not be the best translation in our modern world because the ancients used uh, fear a little bit different than we did today. What they mean by fearing the Lord is a combination of fearing him uh, because he's so powerful. Uh, this is true, especially for those who don't know Jesus. And in addition, it means that everyone is to have the very, very highest respect for him and all that he does. We are to continue to do that even today. We, are, we fear God with a reverent awe and fear. I also would like you to notice Mary here, uh, something about her. There isn't much written about her after this. Uh, we hear about uh, this family now and then a little bit when uh, Jesus is about 12 years old and then finally a little bit uh, during his ministry at age 30. Mary is the mother of Jesus. 
She is the mother of God. We can say many nice and great things about her, and we do say that, but no one, nowhere do we ever read that she acquired great riches or great anything else because of this. Uh, we pretty much feel that she went on, you know, and had a, a life like she was going to have a, as a poor woman in a poor family. The point I want to make here is that she didn't get earthly riches for being the mother of God. However, I would speculate she has earned a high place in heaven for this. I think she would rank right up there, uh, if not higher than Moses and, or David or, or any of the prophets. And this is the important part here. The important part here is that God has a special part for you to play in his plan. Just like Mary, each and every one of you has, has a special and great role to play for Jesus. We have to know that we probably won't get our reward here, but there will be wondrous things waiting for us when we get to heaven. Also know that we probably won't be called to be the mother of God again, or the great leader like Moses, or a great king like David. Those things probably won't happen for any of us. Keep in mind that, only, that Jesus only does good and great things, and he will only have you do good and great things. You will be rewarded greatly for the jobs you do, even if it's just keeping the church clean or serving dinners or, or teaching our children. Whenever you are working for Jesus, then you will be doing great things. So you will be happy doing special things that Jesus has for you to do because I've, because I've found that this is always true. Uh, no matter what you're doing, if you're helping God. But, you know, this isn't the end of this story either, because it just keeps getting better and better as we keep going here. Mary goes on to sing about how the world will get turned upside down. This happens all the time. Mary talks about how God scatters the proud, even if they are only proud in their thoughts. Bad rulers will be will be brought out of power by the power of God. At the same time he was doing all this, he's helping to elevate who? The humble, the humble. I want to tell you that we have a fantastic God. Mary is singing about all the big people coming down, but she doesn't mention herself because once again, why? She is humble. She is humble. What I mean here is that she was just this humble girl leading a very ordinary life, you know, and all of a sudden, kapow. Kapow! Her personal world is absolutely turned upside down. Nothing would ever be the same for her again, but she wasn't going to complain about it. But Mary's world wasn't the only thing that, gets to, that was going to change drastically. The world about was about to change. It would take a couple hundred years or so, but it changed. The Romans persecuted the Christians for a long time before Christianity became the official religion of the empire. First they crucified, they persecuted Christians, and now it's, 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 the, it's the religion of the empire. The list of wonderful things that Jesus has brought to this undeserving world goes on and on and on. The same thing holds true for us today. Many of you have had your world turned upside down. My life totally changed after I had Jesus come into my life. I know what Mary's talking about when, when she says God makes you happy. I know that he has a special job for me to, to be a pastor and help others to know him. I wasn't even uh, sure I wanted to do it, but you know how God is. You know how he is. He just kept nudging me and nudging me and nudging me. And the next thing you know, uh, I'm in front of you people preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, and I'm so very glad to be doing it. My world is upside down from when I was a postal worker. God still humbles the proud. All you have to do is look around. Unfortunately, last weekend we had uh, some riots here in Fargo. Can you imagine such a ridiculous situation? Someone's murdered hundreds of miles away and we end up with, with property damage here. In Fargo, North Dakota. If people want to march and protest, that's okay. But what happened is anything but okay. What did these poor merchants in downtown Fargo do to deserve their stores to be broken up and looted? I'll tell you what they did. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The leaders of this riot were just the opposite of humble. They were so full of themselves that they took the law into their own hands to hurt innocent people. They are no better than the original person who took the life took a life in Minneapolis. I would guess that today they're probably sitting pretty smug thinking they got away with it. Uh, but they didn't. They didn't. Jesus Christ will bring them down 
in his timing and his place. And how would you like to be standing before God with this kind of sin in your hands? These people are not only in trouble in this world, but they're in trouble in the world to come. You cannot just hurt policemen or others uh, and others just because you feel like it. I have no sympathy for them, but I do. But I do hope that they will find Jesus before the t their time is up. We are heading... Uh, to the end times and things will get a lot worse and that's a promise from God however he was and is able to turn the world upside down for your personal goodness and and for taking down the people who who, who uh, are unable who know nothing about being humble but I digress I digress the last point I would like to make here today is that Mary knows she knows that God keeps his promises. She knows this because she knows the scripture. She quotes a couple of things, but you know, I'd like to add a couple more to this because it's so important that you know that God always, always keeps his promises. I'm going to go through these rather quickly. Uh, uh, so the, and, and they are kind of exciting, so just hang on to your hat here for a moment. God promises to love you unconditionally. You will always have someone who loves you beyond the limits of what this world knows what love is. You cannot be so bad that God doesn't love you. We've already talked a little about how uh, about with God you are never alone. God will never leave you. Even if you reject him, he is still there. He may not be as active, uh, uh, as, but he's there just in case you change your mind. One of the best promises is that once you are redeemed, you'll have a, an eternal home in heaven. You will have a mansion, a mansion. All the promises of heaven will be yours. Another thing is that God formed you with intention and purpose. Therefore, he knows you intimately. There is no one in the world that knows you better than God. Therefore, you really have to allow him to run your life. Along with this, is you are exactly who the Bible says you are. You are a child of God. You are an heir to the throne and so much more. God's plan for you is to prosper you and not to harm you and this is huge god isn't in the business of hurting his children if you think god is hurting you then take a little closer look because you are harming yourself by not being obedient also when god calls you to come to him for the first time the risk involved in losing your old life it will be will be uh, much more than well worth it it will be much more than well worth it to come to god it would be well 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 a million times well worth it and I've told you this many times. God will share all that he has with you, including his power. You will have special strength and you can, that you get from no other place. God will share everything. God will always hear your prayers. That is a great promise. Uh, plus, he can move through your prayers. This, in turn, gives us hope. With Jesus, there's always hope. When you feel that you are far away from God, it's because you have moved, not God. Read your Bibles to help maintain your faith. And finally, God will reveal, reveal himself through the community of faith. That is why it's so important to be connected to a church, a real church, that teaches the basics of the Bible. These are just a few of the promises that God has made to you. And there are many, many more. So the question becomes, what promises has God made to you that he hasn't kept? And what have you done or not done so that you haven't received them? I would like you to pray about this for the next few weeks. See if you can get yourself into the habit of listening for God. Still your mind and listen for his quiet word. Jesus loves you so much that he will talk to you all the time. Please learn to listen and hear the wonderful words and promises of Jesus. He will never fail you and and that is a promise and thank you jesus for first loving us let us pray gracious lord we thank you and praise you once again for all that you give us and the promises you make and that that we can have if we are obedient lord help us to be obedient and follow you we praise you in jesus name we pray amen this concludes the service for today. I want to thank you for joining us, and, and please come back again next week. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you, and may his face shine upon you. As you go out into this wonderful world that he made just for you, being obedient, being obedient, go in God's peace.
Thank you, and may God bless you.